In this video, I'm going to share how I approach creating this reimagined still life titled Sunflowers, an ode to Vincent van Gogh. Stick around to the end of this video to see more of the process that went into creating this painting. And with that being said, let's roll the intro and jump right into this. Welcome to episode number seven of the painting process. My name is Alex Hess, and in this episode, we'll be looking at how I approach painting this reimagined still life titled Sunflowers, an ode to Vincent van Gogh. I saw the original at the Philadelphia Museum of Art and was inspired to take the famous painting and give it a new life in my own style. And before we start, if you're new to my channel, the goal of the series the painting process is for me to share footage and insiders on my process to achieving sophisticated realism using acrylic paint. However, if you're an oil painter, it's not limited to. A lot of the same techniques and process can be applied similarly if you're painting with oils. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And you can always find me on specifically Instagram or social media, at Alex Hess Artist. And now with all that, let's jump right into this and start looking at the process that went into creating this painting. So for this painting, my palette will consist of titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, burnt umber, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and carbon black, plus an N7 neutral gray. So I'm starting this painting off after I'd done a underpainting done with raw sienna and a mixture of titanium white for the highlights. I'm just starting by blocking in the background. And as you'll notice throughout this, I'm not too concerned about blending each brush stroke because often even on simplistic backgrounds such as this one, if you can keep up some of that texture throughout the painting, it'll really help give interest into the overall final painting. And now with this sped up quite a bit, the overall paint mixture for this background initially was pretty much a combination of ultramarine blue and cobalt teal. I did add little hues of burnt umber and carbon black throughout certain spots, but it's definitely good even on backgrounds that seem like it's all one color to keep the variation of hues throughout the background. And now I'm just giving a bit more texture and playing around with those edges, which I'll continue to refine later down the painting. But as always, I like to work even in the background from dark to light. It's a good way to get those values correct and really know where the light source and how the paint's gonna shape out. It's good to start the painting off right away from the background and move into the foreground. That way you have a better understanding of how the overall painting will end up feeling. And now at this point, I'm starting to work in the foreground. And right now I'm blocking in the shadow from the vase. And as you can see, the shadows are a bit thinner than some of the highlights. And that's okay because I'll be able to go back in and get even darker and build up the contrast more on this foreground. And like I was saying before, even on some of the more flat surfaces, it's good to let your brush work just get kind of rough and bring in some of that texture to give more interest to the overall painting. And now I continue to work up those tones into that vase and I'm starting it a bit more desaturated and then I'll continue to saturate it as the painting progresses. 
Now at this point, I'm not getting overly concerned about the detail in this face. I just want to make sure my values look somewhat accurate and I'll be able to continue to build upon that. And I'm also saving the deepest shadows towards the end and then I'll also save the brightest highlights for the end. By keeping your values somewhat limited more into the middle range, you're able to continue to go darker or lighter if you need to. Now after I had finished the background and some of those foreground elements, now it's time to get started on the actual foliage of the sunflowers. And again I'm starting from dark to light, and I'm just working my way up throughout the leaves in the composition. A good way to unify your painting is get some of the same hues that you'll see in the background directly into your foreground elements. So for this piece, knowing the background was this nice warmish blue tone, I shifted the green tone slightly towards blue. That way it looks like it fits more peelingly into the background. And again, at this point, I'm not really too concerned about getting every little highlight on each leaf. I'm more concerned about just getting in initial values and blocking in the colors. And because I didn't go too dark or too bright from the start, I'm able to go back in, put some deeper shadows in, and then start bringing out some of those highlights. And for the greens in these leaves, I'm pretty much putting more cool tones in the shadows, and then I'll bring out with a, bun a bit more warm tones in the, in the highlights. Now, as you can see here, once you start bringing out some of those highlights, that's where the dimensionality of the overall form starts taking hold. Once those brighter highlights are put down, then it starts creating the atmosphere and the illusion of depth within those leaves. And as always, highlights usually push the subject forward, shadows cause the subject to recede. And I usually like to do this on my paintings personally, I usually save the most key elements for the very end. That way I have the best understanding of the overall painting before I jump in to some of the moments that people really take in. And I'm just starting these sunflowers out by simply blocking in some of the value. And this is also a good way to almost almost overfill the sunflowers in a sense just to start building some of that color and it'll sh show through as the painting progresses. At this point, the flowers look pretty flat in terms of overall form, but that's also me knowing that I can continue to build up those hue variations by putting on layers as the painting progresses, and that'll help give more of an illusion of dimensionality and overall feel to the sunflowers. You know, when I first started to approach this concept, I first started by looking at some of the compositional elements 
and Van Gogh's original sunflower painting. But within the sketch, I changed a bit of the composition and gave it some of the life that I felt was my own. But I did want to hold on to certain things like the overall theme, the color, and some of the angles on the sunflower. That way it pays an adequate homage to the classic painting. And now with that being said, let's continue this video and see the final layers bring this painting to life. Now it's only until this point where I think some of the detail that people really pick up on start coming to life. And at this point, I'm just putting in a bit more texture within that background, smoothing out some of those transitions. This is always something you'll see on Masterworks, is even when they have a flat background, it's good to keep up some of that brushwork throughout because it, caught, it gives the viewer a lot more interest instead of just painting a flat gradient across the surface. And you'll see me even start to overfill the background slightly because I know when I start working in some of those other tones within the sunflowers, it'll help me control the edge a bit better. And I call this add and subtract. It's basically where you put down the initial layer of paint and then you minus it a bit and then go back in and that helps control those edges, especially with acrylic paint. So as you can see, with the edges of those sunflowers, it was overfilled quite a bit and that way it'll help me control not only the edges, but the actual light source coming into the sunflowers. And this paint mixture for the sunflowers consists of a bit more cadmium yellow, just to really get those bright highlights like you can see here. And a good way to think about value for flowers such as these is sometimes it's helpful to almost blur your eye and just get the essence of the value that you see within the flowers. Instead of worrying about every single petal and seeing if every single thing's perfect, just blur your eyes a bit and see if the overall image is looking the way it should. And now with some of those finer details in the center of the sunflower, I am using a, a pretty small brush just to get in some of those little seeds. And again with what I said earlier about keeping up some texture in the background. And this goes back to the add and subtract point. I first put the background in, added the sunflowers, subtracted a bit with the background again and now I'm going back in and adding a bit more of that background and this is from my practice it seems to be the best way with acrylic paint to really be able to control your edges and for this I wanted I wanted the background to feel a bit choppy because it also provides texture as a backdrop
I wanted to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back in a prompt manner. And if you like this type of content, show an artist some support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I'll try to keep posting new video content onto YouTube, but you can always see more of my work at alex-hess.com or social media at alexhess underscore artist. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and until then, goodbye.